Hello and welcome to episode number 39 of the Knitting Teaspoon podcast. I'm Lisbeth, your host, and this is a podcast which is all about knitting and occasionally about all the other crafts that I do as well. This week there's only been sewing as an additional uh, craft, but I go all over the place sometimes. So, uh, yeah. Uh, thanks for joining me today. It really means a lot that you take some time to spend it with me and to listen about me babble about my crafts. And uh, yeah, please feel free to leave your comments and messages in the, in the comment box, like below the podcast on YouTube or on Ravelry or just message me privately. There's a whole bunch of uh, ways to get in touch with me and they are listed at the end of the episode or in the description box below. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so let's get started. I am wearing my uh, Vana Köfte? Uh, no. Kjole. Kjole? I don't know. I don't know how you pronounce this, but it is kind of a, a, a dress, but it... Uh, for, for you guys, it will probably just look like a sweater because, you know, you can only see like this much of me, I think. Um, but uh, this is a sweater that I knit um, around, uh, about a year ago. I think I started November last year and I finished in January this year. So it's about a year old. But uh, I finally got around to adding these clasps at the front. Um, this is steaked and then uh, a band was uh, knit onto it and you guys I've knit this band several times because I wasn't happy with the way it was looking before but with these clasps it all stays together much more because otherwise like if I open these it will kind of hang off my shoulders like uh, the neck line will get way too wide so it can kind of fall off my shoulders even so I'm really happy that I have installed these tiny bits. I, I see now that I still need to cut some ends or tuck them away and weave them in. I used some embroidery floss in uh, well a color that's quite closely matched uh, uh, color, of, yeah, the red color of the uh, sweater uh, or dress actually because it, it's really knee length uh, for me and. Uh, it's so nice and warm you guys um, this week it's been freezing several times at night uh, not in the daytimes but we have uh, reached temperatures like five degrees Celsius above uh, freezing which I believe is like eight degrees or or maybe nine degrees um, uh, Fahrenheit above freezing temperature so it's been properly cold and better so because it's the end of November already and it's a very exciting time in the Netherlands because uh, Sinterklaas has arrived in the Netherlands uh, this is uh, yeah the guy who uh, well he was a holy man he ca originally came from uh, Turkey and he uh, did a lot of good stuff for um, the poorer people and especially the children so he's a saint of, of the children and uh, he comes uh, around every year uh, like two, two and a half uh, weeks before um, his birthday on uh, December 6th and um, the evening before uh, Santa Claus's birthday uh, we celebrate uh, with uh, gift giving um, at least for those small children uh, um, when we grow up we um, we have to do the gift giving ourselves, of course, but uh, so the class comes around for the little ones. And uh, yeah, it's uh, a very nice and exciting time and uh, also means that I'm quite busy with some gift giving preparations. But uh, yeah, that's just part of that time of the year. Uh, so for, for me, the deadline for gift giving is like um, the weekend before the 5th of December because that's when we get together with my family and that means there's still a lot of work to do <laughs> anyway so um, in terms of gift giving um, this has nothing to do with Cinderglass I believe but I need this pair of socks and they are finished now these are the, um, the size 49 European and I believe 13 and 14 UK and US and I can't remember which size is for which country but I guess you might know they are very large socks so uh, yeah they are finished uh, I, I really like how stretchy they are I mean come on this is just 
this is gonna fit almost anyone i mean you can have like tiny legs that, that would just fit in this and they would probably stay up quite nicely or you can have huge legs like this and then it will still fit so it's i, I like having ribbing on socks especially for people uh, that are not myself so that i can uh, how do you call that so, so that I, I i have some more liberty in the size because this is likely to fit more people good than a sock that has just plain stockinette on the legs i believe so uh, yeah and you can see uh, my progress keeper from last week i i purchased this one from uh, the same company that uh, that had the the sock blank with the butterfly so shorts on um etsy or maybe s7 horse but i i, I believe you would pronounce it as shorts Anyway, so I have this tiny spinning wheel stitch marker, which I really, really like. So, yeah. But um, that, that much of it has been done this week, so I'm really glad that I have it finished now. There is another work in progress uh, for, for this week. And uh, it, I, I don't think I have touched my... Uh, cardigan at all so I'm knitting on this pink cardigan uh, with with a Japanese knitting stitch Bible uh, technique on it but I've been talking to you guys about my coat that I'm trying to sew and you guys I think I managed to salvage it because like this is the pocket and I I, I realized uh, while editing that the lighting is really not that great uh, or at least not with this dark a fabric so it's hard to see but uh, this pocket was already quite neat and I was happy with uh, how it looked and I managed to disconnect oh, and <laughs> collect a lot of hair on my <laughs> coat to be apparently hmm. anyway um, so I managed to disconnect the other coat pocket entirely and uh, I had enough leftover fabric to cut out the inner pockets again so these parts are freshly cut out again and I've reinstalled it and it's not perfectly straight definitely not but I think I salvaged it I think I can live with these lines not being perfectly parallel but then at least the finish of those seams is like nice and neat yeah I'm, I'm really happy that I went back and uh, tried to do it again because this just looks so much better and you guys will be able to see that everything now is connected so it you can kind of see the idea of what the code is gonna look like so the back panels are stitched together now and they're on the side is stitched to the well the side seam is, is done so there's a gap here for the arms so there will of course be sleeves on on my coat but they are not on my coat yet i put on some loops because there's gonna be some kind of belt uh to keep the entire thing together um uh, so there is some progress uh, but unfortunately sewing takes some like dedicated time in one go like um, knitting is quite easy to pick up and drop and even if you have like five minutes you can get maybe a row in or half a row depending on of course this is the size of your project maybe you're knitting a, a huge lace shawl that will take you an hour to finish a row it's all fine but you um, you can just pick it up and drop it down quite easily and get started right away and with sewing you just have to make the space and put up your machine and all that and uh, all that kind of preparation uh, stuff and it just takes a little bit longer before you get into it and once you're going you can uh, like really put a garment together quickly I mean I think sewing a coat will be much faster than knitting one uh, in, in total time spent on it but yeah it just takes a while so uh, my coat is uh, in progress and it's it's gonna be a finished coat at some point I'm really excited and mind you there's a lot of loose threads that I still need to cut but that can happen later so uh, yeah 
that's it for the coat. Um, then there are quite a few new cast-ons this week. So first of all, there is um, a cast-on made in uh, this yarn. And you can see it is uh, just a little bit of yarn. It used to be uh, 100 grams of yarn. So it is uh, Dutch Co. in-store uh, yarn. It's um, I think a hand dyed wool that is sold in my local yarn shop so I think it's really difficult to come by uh, but it's 100% uh, merino and it's 166 uh, meters per 100 grams and I believe that's like 180 something yards um, per 100 grams um, but this was 100 grams and it's obviously not anymore. It's 7 grams now and I've started and completed uh, a project but I can't show you yet because it's been a test knit and uh, I've been asked to uh, not share any pictures of uh, the project that I've knit. So uh, yeah, so I can just show you the yarn. But I really like this icy blue color and once the pattern is published then I will tell you guys uh, about this project again. I. I think it will be so exciting. I, I'm quite happy with uh, the project, so I will show you. Then there was another project that I just needed to get started because this evening my boyfriend and I will be going to a cabaret show and um, that means I will have some time to sit down and knit a little, but uh, yeah, it also means that uh, I will need some plain and easy knitting and as you may know I have been working on <laughs> the quite intricate um, cardigan which is not so suitable for uh, knitting in the dark I believe I mean there are some sections that is plain stuck in it and I can memorize the lace pattern uh, by looking at it but if I will have to do that all in darkness yeah I, I don't think that's gonna be a good idea so um, I cast on with the uh, with a sock yarn that my boyfriend got me from his trip to Greece and I have cast on the toe of a sock and I really haven't done anything else than just uh, cast on the toe uh, it's yeah it's just his regular toe shape and I may have knit like one or two rounds past the, the toe but I didn't want to knit too much because I wanted to make sure that I had a lot of just plain knitting in around uh, before I had to be bothered with the gusset and all that stuff. So this <laughs> this project will go with me uh, this evening uh, for the cabaret and uh, yeah. It's gonna be a sock and it's so soft this yarn. I think it's because there's this uh, camel in, in there so it is this Katia socks uh, with uh, 55% wool, 25% nylon, and 20% camel. Amazing soft. So, and that's not all you guys. I've also <laughs> cast on another new project this week. I've been doing a lot of small projects, <laughs> I believe. But I cast on this one uh, with the BC Garn Samilla Garn. And it is a mitten, or it's gonna be a mitten. You can see it a little bit on this side, I believe, because you know there's a gap for the thumb here, and uh, yeah, it's just a geometric pattern that I just came up with. I'm not following any pattern or anything, uh, just improvising a bit as I go, and I yeah, I really like how it's turning out so far, but. I actually I was a lot further. I was already decreasing for the for the fingertips, you know, for the top of the mitten, but then I found like I think it's too baggy. I, I and the thumb hole was way too big as well. So I decided to <laughs> rip all the way back to uh, the uh, to the point where I had cast on. The additional stitches for uh, the hand so I will first knit the hand of the um, of the mitten and then uh, from there uh, once that's finished I will uh, continue with these stitches that I've set aside on this green piece of cotton 
I had uh, laying about and uh, yeah I will uh, knit it a thumb later but yeah I I didn't like how loose and baggy it was so the last thing I did before I went to sleep was rip it all out and uh, roll it up into two balls again so here's my yellow and, and green uh, balls of yarn and you guys this is somewhat rustic yarn but it is so incredibly soft most rustic yarns kind of have some kind of hardness or itchiness to them and, and this is just I don't know it's so incredibly soft it's amazing well that's it for the mittens I guess and yeah hopefully next week they will actually be finished but it was such a quick quick project because I know that yesterday when I arrived at work I had just put on the um, I had just cast on uh, after the uh, the thumb separation and then I had knit the entire body of the mitten after that um, mostly of, uh, most of it at work because we had a group outing at work uh, so I was finished working at half past four and then um, I started eight in the morning so uh, at half past four my day was done and uh, we went out for dinner at six o'clock so I had some spare time before we went out for dinner and then afterwards uh, on the train uh, I had some time to knit as well so uh, yeah. and I, <laughs> I took the time and I, I did knit so uh, yeah. it's a very fast project so I like that and then there's one more project that has seen some love and it is my blanket so um, yeah I have two blankets on the go but this is my sock yarn uh, knitting uh, blanket so I cast on for this square this week uh, while I was at my local knit group which I finally went to again because I did not have an aching belly this week anymore so um, yeah I feel a lot better by the way so uh, yeah diagnosis is gonna be a recurring thing but uh, it's it's not bothering me right now so that's good anyway so um, yeah I cast on this uh, this red square first and the yellow square and I asked someone to give me a random number and that will be uh, the color for the next one and she was really disappointed when it turned out to be gray but I I really like this gray so uh, yeah I think it's pretty um, and I think in the overall look of the blanket it, it's also important for those of you who don't know uh, I've been knitting a blanket for quite some time and I make these lock heaven squares like this one and this one and I believe with these two I have all the colors in there so there's ten different colors um, so the six colors of the rainbow <laughs> I'd say and uh, there's a white a light gray a darker gray and a black and um, yeah all, all these together I, I just roll uh, a 10 sided die uh, to um, to find out what's the next color or sometimes I just ask people for a random number between 1 and 10 and uh, yeah and I need that color and um, so my blanket grows and then once I have enough of these squares I will sew the border together and then I will do some mitered square inner parts um, to fill out the blanket so just a border will be these squares so six of these squares wide and six squares long that's the coffee machine <laughs> so the blanket is going to be like six squares of these wide and six squares of these long and then i will fill out the inner four by four <laughs> squares with another type of uh, squares but i think that's all i have for you today and uh, the better or, or the memory card of my uh, <laughs> camera is uh, starting to run very full so I will have to end the episode here so uh, yeah thank you so much for joining me this week and I hope you guys have a lovely week and I hope to see you again next week so uh, thank you so much and uh, 